Hello, everyone. Welcome back to A Turn of Events, where we help put a positive spin on the future of your business. I'm Annette Nave, the Creative Director and CEO of Nave Productions. We are a strategic event production company based in New York City. We specialize in corporate, social, nonprofit, and weddings, which is pretty much everything, uh, you know, because under corporate falls all kinds of different things, trade shows, galas, retreats, offsites, all kinds of stuff. Um, we also specialize in coaching live coaching events. So if you are a coach and you are looking to sell a program, you want to talk to us because we are very knowledgeable in multi-day events. We just finished a three-day hybrid event, which was actually really fun and scary at the same time. I feel like I hadn't done an event in forever. So we were in Orlando a couple weeks ago. We had 130 people live and we had 400 people virtually who live streamed in. Uh, it was really fun and we had to do temperature checks every morning and that was kind of a little extra that we didn't count on but we did it and everyone seems to be fine and everyone had a ball and we had a gala at the end of it which was fun. So, you know, Florida is a little more lenient and, and so that was, but everybody wore masks throughout the event. When you got into the space, you didn't need to, but um, into the meeting spaces, you could take your mask off. But for the most part, everybody wore masks and it was fun. And But it was exhausting because I hadn't done a live event in over a year and a half probably at this point, which is so crazy to think. So we're excited that things are getting back. New York is 50% back in right now. So, you know, they've approved weddings and things like that. We have a couple weddings coming up this year. So we're really excited about that. So if you are an event planner or wedding planner and you are looking to start your own business or you already have a business and you're struggling, join us over at the Event Planner Society. That's my Facebook group. We have amazing people in there, so much engagement, lots of content I'm gonna be sharing. I am actually launching another workshop. We did a free five-day workshop at the beginning of February. And it was such a success. People loved it. Five days, amazing content. I just delivered, delivered, delivered. And I want to make sure that you guys are, you know, successful in your businesses. So five-day workshop, I'm going to do it again on April 29th. We are just going to open up uh, the, the website next week so you guys can register for it. Join us over at the Event Planner Society work Facebook group. And then you'll, be, you'll also hear about it in all my marketing. So if you follow me, you'll see this free workshop. So I'm excited to do it again. I had a great time. It's exhausting, but I had a super fun time and I just gave out so much great content and to help people. So I hope that you can join us there. And if you're looking to do a live hybrid or virtual event, we're still doing them up. You know, it looks like virtual is kind of moving out of its way, but we always have done virtual. Um, we have a, done a hybrid aspect. So we've done live with a live stream to it. It usually was, less people on the live stream and more in person, but um, it's now switching. So we're excited about that. So reach out, happy to get to consults. We can help you with it, whatever it is that you need. So my next guest who I'm super excited about because I have not written a book. It scares me half to death. I don't need, I always think what the hell does anybody want to hear anything about what I have to say? <laughs> but um, I do have a lot of great content to give out with my 30 years experience in this business in the event business. So um, I'm sure there's lots of things in there that I could write a book about, and we're going to learn about that. So Susan Crossman, she's an author, editor, book coach, and adventurous, an adventurous who lives to harness the power of a good story to the goal of peace on earth. So let me welcome Susan. How are you? Just dandy. Thank you, Annette. And by the way, can I say congratulations to you? For having the courage to do what you're doing in this very uncertain time. I really admire the uh, chutzpah that you're bringing to the work that you do. We, we need that energy. Thank you so much, so much. You know, it just, uh, you just had to kind of figure it out, you know, and it's been a little crazy. We are doing our last virtual, like full virtual event that's not on the books right now next week. So it's for a fundraiser, um, Tigerman Schools, which is a great school that helps um, uh, like autistic children and adults. And it's all different levels, elementary, middle school and high school. And so it's a really amazing organization. So we're doing a, a virtual gala fundraiser next Thursday. So it's the full last one in our books. And um, yeah. 
But yeah, so it's exciting. Thank you. That's so sweet. And I actually, not to toot my own horn, but you got, somebody's got to do it. I got top 21 influential planners around the globe for Women at an International Day. Like, I was like so shocked. Someone wrote up an article and there were 21 of us and I was on it. So I was like, that's, and I don't even know who that person was. So it's very nice to be recognized with, you know, because you work hard and you hope that you're uh, making a difference. And I love to teach. So that, that helps. Okay, so about me, let's talk about what you're doing. Why don't you tell everybody about who you are, how you got into this, and all that stuff? Because writing, you know, writing a book is not easy. So, and I know a lot of people that have, but I would love to hear more about you and how you got to this point. Oh, sure. Well, it's kind of a funny story in some ways. I'm um I'm a career writer. All I've ever wanted to be was a writer. I was one of those little kids that would crawl up into the apple tree in the backyard and I have a pen and a paper up there and I would write for hours. And so I always knew that I wanted to be a writer. Created a career as a professional writer, uh, working in journalism. I worked in government communications and corporate communications and marketing. I was a marketing copywriter. Fast forward to the day when I finally said, okay, I've been dreaming about becoming a published author for a really long time. I was pregnant with my family's fourth child. It was a blended, blended marriage. Fourth kid was coming along. I thought, hey, I know. I'll take this pregnancy and I'll write my first book. Well, I, I was thinking it was my only book at the time. And it was just a perfect thing. I, I had a writer life. I lived in a house on a beach. I had two dogs. I, so I spent my days working away on my book. At the end of nine months, the baby was ready and the book was nowhere near ready. So I, here the professional writer is going, wait, this should have been easier than it was. Like how hard can writing a book be? But it, it was, it was really hard for me. I didn't know what I was doing. And you also said something that really resonated with me, Annette, which was, who's going to read what I'm writing? You know, yeah. Who's going to want to read what I have to say? Right. So that, that mindset piece really tripped me up for a long time and continued to trip me up for another 11 years. Yeah. 13 years to get that book finished. And wow. uh, yeah, it was, it, it was a beast. I tell you, it, and yeah. a lot of it was the mindset issue. So, so I, I come at my work as a book coach and an editor with a lot of authentic experience with self doubt and not knowing yeah. what to do. And now well, I fast forward again, I've written five fiction and nonfiction books. So, Figured it out. Yeah, I think everybody has that. It's If you aren't scared writing a book, there's something wrong, I think, right? I mean, I, it's uh, just like yeah. being an artist and being on stage and every, you know, they could be on stage a million times and still get the nerves before they go on stage. So I think it's, it's probably good to have that. But it definitely is. I know when I went to college late in life and I didn't realize that I was actually a pretty good writer. I was like, wow, I, I'm pretty good at this. So... I enjoyed, you know, I had wrote all the papers and then I had to like, you know, you know, the reviewing and all that editing and all that stuff. I have a legal background. So editing was always something that I got really good at. So, um, so that helped, but I actually, you know, I mean, I have my moments and I can't think of like, I don't have a huge vocabulary. Like, you know, I know some, I have some friends who have an English background, who have an English degree and the words that they come up with is just so fantastic. That's not something I'm good at. I mean, I can obviously write and keep it simple, but I think they say to try to keep it simple because most people aren't going to understand, you know, complicated words. And otherwise, if you're, you know, if you're reading it, you're not going to understand. So that's really awesome. Well, look at, can I jump in with Malcolm Gladwell? Just to your point about simple words. I've done an analysis of Malcolm Gladwell's writing style. Now, uh -huh. he is one of the most popular authors on the planet right now. He uses very short sentences and very simple words. He doesn't overcomplicate things. You know, the, the fancier word is not generally used in, in his books, and we right. love them. So. Right, and I think it's better that way just because it's easier to understand and everybody can understand it. So, uh, you know, so I think it's right. Okay, so I got a million questions here that I want to ask you, and I know we're, if you guys have any questions out there, get in. Susan's going to answer all your questions about writing a book. So I'm sure there's lots of people out there that want to write a book. So uh, let's get, but we have lots of great questions here, so we're going to start. What are, the, what are the benefits of writing a book for a business owner? Boy, uh, so many of them, Annette. It's just one of the best things you can do for your business. Writing a book is one of those things that differentiates a, an entrepreneur or a business owner from the rest of the crowd. 
-hmm. And as you pointed out, it's an intimidating project. And a lot of people would love to write a book and they have no clue how to do it. So so we know that if, if someone has had the energy and the time and the effort to write a book and share their message, that's someone who, who we look up to. And so right out of the gate, you're, you're differentiating yourself from everybody else by the fact that you've written a book. It also leads to a lot of uh, wonderful speaking opportunities. I've, I've had speaking opportunities fall into my lap where the, the only question that was asked was, well, does she have a book? Yeah. Yeah, I've got five of those and bingo, I was in. So it's, it's really a huge credibility piece and a huge um, marketing piece. It's great for publicity. Oh, yeah, it definitely is. So what makes a book successful for the author? I go back to what are your goals? Everybody has a slightly different reason for writing a book. Some people want to use it as a revenue generator. There are ways to do that. Not very many people make a lot of money on their books, but there right. are strategies around revenue generation. Some people want it to boost their credibility. Some people would like to use that book in order to share their message. So, so depending on your goal, you, you measure your success according to how well it's achieving your goal. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody has a different different reason for doing it. Um, book sales are not always the number one measure of success for people. Right, right. I've heard that it's hard to make money on a book. So, but I know we're probably going to talk about some of that. Okay, so how long does it take to write a decent book? And you had mentioned that it took you 11 years or something to write a book. But what's like realistic about that? Yeah, the, the, the 11 year cycle before I started on my publishing endeavor was about self doubt and not having a skill set or a process around managing myself and figuring out how to write a book. So, so that really wasn't representative. The shortest book I've ever taken, or the shortest amount of time I've ever taken to write a book was six months. That's fitting it into my life. Now, at the time, my kids were a little bit younger. I have, I'm a widowed mom of three children at this point in my life, I run a business. And uh, we have a dog and I have a disabled elderly mom living 20 minutes away. So I have a lot of balls to bounce around in my life. But six months, I was able to do it, even with the demands on my life. Most entrepreneurs have very busy lives as well. They have personal commitments. They have charitable commitments quite often. And I would say a year is a reasonable amount of time to give yourself to to get that book started and then finished. You, you may or may not get your editing and your publishing done in that amount of time, but that's not hurting yourself to get it done at, in at a year. So if you're doing it a year, how much time are you spending? An hour a day, two hours a day? What do you take only during the week, mm -hmm. like seven days a week? What does that look like? Everybody's a little bit different. So I figure it takes me between 150 and 250 hours to write a book. Now, I'm really practiced at it. I'm a very comfortable writer, very confident writer. Not everybody is at that stage where they feel really great about writing. Um, so 150 to 250 hours, depending on how long my book is, of course. Most people, I would say, if you're counting on about 400 hours, where can you find 400 hours in your life? Uh, whether it's using eight hours every weekend or a couple of hours couple of times a week, you know, figure, figure that out according to your schedule, but it's so doable. You right. just have to make it a priority. That's, that's the important part is committing to it and deciding that no matter what, you are going to get this book done this year. Right, right, right. So um, I hear the work of writing a book doesn't stop uh, with getting the manuscript finished. What else is involved? Uh, yeah, that's the big surprise. And that was a big surprise for me too, with that very first book was, okay, I'm done. Well, you're not. <laughs> you have to. Um, you you are well advised to get it edited. A really good editor makes a huge difference to your credibility and your reputation in the writing of a book, even if you're a, a strong writer and a comfortable writer, because your editor is going to find mistakes that you missed. We right. all get so close to our writing that we don't see things that a, that a stranger will find for you. So so. Right. Get the manuscript done, then you want to find an editor and get the book editor. Depending on how long your book is, you're probably looking at two to four or five months for the editing process, depending on how much of a priority you're making it, because there's give and take involved in an editing relationship. Then you want to get it published, and publishing can take, I would say, it's certainly possible to get a publishing arrangement completed within a month. That's really going 
quite quickly. And if you are somebody who likes control of a lot of details, you might want to ensure that there's a little bit more time involved in that. And so maybe up to three or four months involved with the publishing. And then you have to market it, launch it and market it. And that can take forever. Marketing is the, the real wild card I find in publishing, in publishing because marketing takes, as you probably know for your own business, whatever you yes. can throw at your marketing, your marketing would be happy to have. Right, it's ongoing. So, uh, but you yeah. set your, your wife, your Wi-Fi went out a little bit. So it was four to five months on oh. the editing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And four to five months on the editing. And I mean, it can be done much faster, but it depends on how much control you feel you need to have over the process itself and how much input you would like to have on the process and, and who your publisher is. There's so many different publishers out there that work so many different ways that that has an impact on how quickly you can get that done as well. Right. You can get it done in a month. That's that's certainly doable. And how do you get a publisher? So there, oh boy, big question there. There are hundreds of publishing companies out there, self-publishing companies primarily. I guess we should back up a little bit and talk about the different types of publishing models okay. that are available right now. I'd say really we're looking at four. You can go straight to Amazon and just upload your files yourself, have your own cover design and all the rest of it and just do it that way. And that's immediate. I mean, that's not even a month. You could right. do that overnight yeah. if you have the skills. Yeah, I see yeah, that. Just, yeah, yeah, that's that's the quick quickest way to do it. It, it ne isn't necessarily a quality controlled way of doing it, but it's, it's certainly a, a way of doing it. Then we have self-publishing and lots and lots of self-publishing companies out there that will assist you with that process of, of getting your ISBN number and uploading all the files to Amazon, preparing the files, helping you with the cover design, laying out the interior of the book. There, there are a lot of steps involved in the publication process itself. So a pub self-publishing company will help you do all of that. Mm -hmm. Then we have hybrid publishing companies, which are kind of a cross between the self-publishing model and the traditional publishing model. Hybrid publishing companies will often give you a royalty arrangement, which a self-publishing company doesn't typically do. And they will also assist with more of the marketing. And now you can get marketing through a self-publishing company as well. But the, the hybrid publishing companies tend to be a little more polished in the approach that they take on that. Some of them will decide whether or not they want to publish your book. So it's not just that you can command a hybrid publishing company necessarily with your dollars to publish your book. Some of them have certain things that they're looking for. So there, there's more of a filtering system with a hybrid publishing company. And then we have the traditional publishing companies, the Simon and & Schuster's and, and right. Random House and so on, that, that they're the, the big names that we know. And the barriers to entry to a publishing contract with one of those companies are very, very, very high. You need to have a literary agent working for you. So your first step, if you want the big guns working for you on the publishing side, you have to first hire a literary agent. And oh, that's my dog. <laughs> She's excited about publishing too. <laughs> oh, that's Andy, Cut it out. Sorry about that. Okay. It's your squeaky toy. She loves her squeaky toy. <laughs> um, so, the, so the traditional publishing companies, again, you, you hire your literary agent first. Getting a literary agent to take you on, however, is a highly competitive process. Yes. And, you know, it's um, really, it, uh, what I'm hearing in the, in the system right now is it's taking between two and four years for the people who are successful at, at landing a literary agent, two to four years to get one. Wow. Because you send out query letters to the agents, the agents are inundated with book manuscripts. They have to filter through all of these book manuscripts to find the ones that they feel have a lot of promise, that wow. they feel they will be able to sell to a publishing company. So the, the literary agent is the middleman in the process. The literary agent, once you've landed one, if you land one, is then obliged to take your manuscript to different publishers and see if they can get a contract for you with a publisher. And that process is taking about two years for the people who are successful at it. So it could be a six year journey before you get a publisher on board and then another year, sometimes two years before your book comes out. So it is the slow boat to China. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there are a lot of advantages to it in that the publisher looks after all of the publishing. 
you don't worry about your Amazon account. You don't worry about an ISBN number. You they publish it for you. They they ensure the copies are printed. They make sure the distribution is handled. Like right. you just sit back and enjoy being published. I mean, you still have to market. Even with a traditional company, you are still responsible for a lot of marketing. But it's um, it's a lot easier with a traditional publishing company. Sounds like a lot, but you know, it's rewarding. Yeah, when it's a little overwhelming. Yeah. A little. So what are the costs for all of that? What could it, what are the costs to write a book? What do you have to think about? Well, oh man, I, I start with the value of my time. So if I'm going to spend two, three, 400 hours on a project as an entrepreneur, that has a dollar value to me. That's sure. foregone revenue. For me so that's really where i start looking at the math is okay how much time am i going to devote to that and what's my roi and for me it's not necessarily dollars in book sales for me it has a reputational component so what's another book going to do to my reputation now i've got five and for me it's the joy of writing as much as anything else and the accomplishment i get i get a pretty big uh kick out of another book coming out and seeing my name on my book, you know, there's, there's a huge benefit yeah. to that. Yeah, like it's it. very exciting. It is, it is wonderful, but that, but there is a cost to it. You know, right. it's, it's time I'm not spending on my business. However, I, the, it is the marketing investment for me quite often is, is where I look at it. But then, then you are, once you have your manuscript finished, I mentioned that you do need to hire an editor. So the editing cost of a manuscript will be, range between, well, for me, it's, between five and ten thousand dollars for me to edit a book for someone, a book manuscript, depending on the length of the book and the author's comfort with language. We're all on a continuum. And by the way, Annette, there are people that I work with who shuffle in the door going, Oh, I've been told my whole life I'm a terrible writer, but I've got this book manuscript. Quite often their writing isn't as bad as they thought it was, because it's not just about the grammar. Being a good writer is also about the observancy of the detail. So right. what have you noticed? What is it, is it, you know, do you have lots of color in your language? Are you, are you noticing details? Do you have sensory information included? And quite often people have four or five of the components of being a really super writer. Their sentence structure isn't so great, but we could, an editor works on that. You know, that's why you have an editor is because they're there to make you look great. So, but, but the cost is, is, I mean, you can get it done for $400 online somewhere. And that's, I don't recommend that because th those methodologies typically don't go very deep into the editing, but up to say $10,000. Uh, I, I have had more expensive projects, editing projects, but th there were extraneous circumstances involved. Yeah. Then your publishing is not the next step, which, uh, uh, Probably you're looking at five to ten thousand dollars for the publishing as well, and then marketing. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> yeah, what would you like to spend on your marketing? Right, right. <laughs> but exactly. marketing, marketing is about results. So the more money you spend on your marketing, hopefully, the more the more results you're going to have, depending on what your goal is for the book right. that you're writing. Yeah. So how do you make sure you get a decent ROI? Well, start with what's your goal. So um, for a lot, actually a lot of my clients, it is actually the transformational aspect of becoming a published author that they're most interested in. Like me, it's a dream that they've had their whole lives and they just want to write a book. And if that's all that you want to get out of the project, then your ROI can be 100% just by getting published. You know, that, the, that you know it's a solid book, you had an editor involved, you're proud of the cover and you're proud of the interior of the book, that you know that it's a solid book. So that can be as simple as your goal is. However, for me, I'm, I'm probably investing fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 when all is said and done between my time, my the editing of the book, the publication of the book. I buy copies of my book to sell um, as well. I, I'm traditionally published, but right. I also purchase copies of my own book so that I can sell them and give them out and so on. So um, the ROI would then come come down to, well, did my business increase? Yeah. Did I see a business increase? And again, there are things you can do in your manuscript to invite people to work with you. And that's what I am encouraging a lot of business owners to do. 
well, all business owners I encourage to do it, whether they want to do it or not is up to them. But your book is a wonderful opportunity to invite people to work with you. And you can embed certain invitations in your book to bring people back to your website where they have an opportunity to engage in you. And I've seen this beautifully done in some business books where the, the author will have um, created a landing page on their website specifically for resources for the book. So in the book, they'll say, please go and get the template for this on my website. Here's the link. Yeah. You enter your email address to get the resources. And now you're part of that individual's mailing list. And you get their, all their invitations. And things. Right. right. So from an ROI perspective, that's that can be very attractive. And that's where you're going to make more of your money. Yeah. And is then you increase also, building your business. Right. And getting speaking gigs, which paying speaking gigs. Oh. But also, if you're getting a speaking gig, there's people in the room that could, you know, get you get work from. So, um, you know, you could get clients from. So that's you have to look at everything. But what did you? Oh, so, the opportunity for huge. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, that's okay. That's okay. Um, if you were just doing that, that because I have a lot of friends that I know that have written books and they just do the the whole Amazon thing. Is it just that that's an easier way to go, right? It's less expensive to do it that way. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the easiest way to do it. And there's nothing wrong with it, by the way. In some circles, there's a bit of judgment uh, in the editing and the publishing world around different types of publishing models. I, I, I find that people who are steeped in the traditional publishing model feel that's the only way to go. And, and anybody who self-publishes, they're not doing it the right way. Well, I don't believe that for a second. It depends on what do you want to get out of this project. Right. There is nothing wrong with going straight to Amazon. It's a powerful way to get your message out. Why wouldn't you want to do that? Yeah, yeah. No, I listen, get it yeah. out there. That's, you know, yes. get it out. You yeah. have the book make, and then go from there. Who cares? You know, <laughs> at the end yeah, of the day. Make yourself available. Absolutely. Make yeah. your, you, and uh, someone like you too, Annette, you have spent your entire career developing a body of knowledge that people are hungry to access. Yeah. They, they can access you through your podcast, through your website. You know, there are different opportunities for people to access what you have to offer. How much more powerful would it be to have a book to leverage? I know. And you, you've so, got the content. Yeah, well, I, that's a good point, is I write a lot of blogs. Can I, I've heard that I can take my blogs and literally turn them into a book, like section. Yes, definitely. Right? Yeah, there, there's some finesse involved in that, in that you want to start with a really strong structure. So a string of blog posts is, doesn't make for very interesting reading as a book. Right. However, if right. you have a really solid structure with a table of contents that says, okay, the topic in chapter two is X, then you can take all of the blogs that you have already written about topic X, plunk them into chapter two. They'll need to be edited. They, they won't make sense just as a whole pile of, right. of you know, yeah. 4,000 words of blog. Right. But it's, it's not that hard to edit it. You can heck hire an editor to do that. That's what they know how to do. Right. And that's a pretty low, um, low in personal investment for you to be able to do it that way. But you need the structure. If you've got a solid structure, then you're away to the races and, throw this 150 to 250 hours of effort away because you've already spent that time writing the blogs. Right. It's yeah. just an editing job at that point. Right. And, uh, yeah. That's, that's a brilliant way to do it. it. And that's the way I've thought about is probably the way I would do it. Although I'm such a perfectionist at being a play, <laughs> being a producer, it's really hard. So I don't know, yeah. but um, I do have an online program that gives all of this. So I, I create, you know, I have a, one a year long program. I have a six month program, so I have a lot of different things, but um, that teach a lot of this. So what some people are also doing is taking their programs and converting that into a book, and that's a pretty easy. I've worked with clients too. Pretty easy way to do it as well, where you you just convert the copy that you've already written for your program into right. a book format, right. I and think that's easy too. Yeah, I think that's what Kelly did. Kelly wrote. She did the. She has the live launch yeah. method, which I. She's. I. She's amazing. I coach with her. She's my. She's my coach. But um, and she um took her live launch method and she turned it into a book. And I read the book and it was fantastic. Like, I couldn't put it down. So and it really was. She did a workshop 
And in that workshop, she literally took the workshop and turned it into a book. And it's pretty, pretty similar to what you would learn in the workshop. So it's such a great idea. If you have like a five day workshop or whatever that is, you could turn that into a book as well. Just the method or whatever you're teaching, you can turn it in. So I think that's a great idea. I should think about doing yeah, that. And, in here, workshop. and here, here's another thing. A lot of people have online courses, but they're audio or, vid or video right. courses. There is a movie star of an app that I absolutely love called Otter, O-T-T-E-R dot A-I. And if you haven't heard of it and you think you might want to write a book, get hold of it because you can run all of your audio and your video uh, files out, out loud. I mean, there are ways to do it digitally. How I've off, most often done it is I'll run the video and I have Otter running. Otter provides a transcript right on the spot of everything it's listening to. And it's not perfect, you do need to correct it, right. but it is so much easier than any other way of getting a transcription of your material. Then right. you've got it and it's so they, an editing job for me. They take the audio, so like for example, I have this, this show, right? And then we transcribe yeah. it into a, a, we take the audio and put it on the podcast, but we have to edit and you know do some things to it. Um, but you can take, you can use it. It's O T T E R dot A I. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Christy will put that. App, yeah. Christy will put that in the yeah. chat. Um, o T T E R dot A I. And so you just put yeah. your, you just download the video or the audio, and it it transcribes it for you. Is that what you're saying? Um, th there is a way to do that. It's a lot more complex to do it that way. You just run. I I would recommend people just run the video or the audio with Otter turned on and listening and then it will automatically as it's listening to the audio or the video recording it will automatically create the transcription and you can set it up to email you the transcription oh, that's so it'll great. come to your inbox and it's so easy and you do have to do some editing because of course we don't speak the way one would like to write yeah. so there does still need to be some editing but it is but the content is all there it is you, you go and do whatever you want to do have four phone calls while the while otter is listening to your to your your video and it's done so, so that is do such a time for this so you have to do it directly from the app yes yeah yeah now i have it set up with my zoom uh, actually my assistant is a technological brilliant technologically brilliant That's individual she has set it up so with all all of my for example my book coaching clients when we have a book coaching client, we have Otter automatically transcribing digitally. This isn't, you know, all, all it's doing it automatically for us. Right. But at the end of every book coaching call, we have a transcription of the call and I email that to my clients because quite often really brilliant stuff comes up in a book coaching call. And yeah. I don't know how many times someone has said, oh, gee, I wish I had caught that. That was so great. Well, now, now we have caught that and they can just go back to the transcription, copy and paste the special brilliant parts of what they said into their book. Oh, that's right? great. Yeah. Lovely. I wonder if you can do yeah. it StreamYard too, I wonder, because this is what I use is StreamYard. So I would have to check into oh, that, but it sounds great. I, I imagine you could. Otter has really grown a lot over the last year or two and their capabilities have improved too. So very much worth checking out. Yeah, it sounds like it. That sounds great. So I heard you talk about um, people's books as bridge builders. Um, what do you mean by that? Oh, well, this is something I only have come to recognize in the last few years. I've, I've been working with books for years and years and years and with editing clients and book coaching clients. And, and, and as time has gone on, I've come to realize, wow, we're, we're not just writing a book. We're building bridges in the world with these books. And there are three bridges that I've identified that I see happening. Maybe there are many, many more, but the, the real big ones are the bridge to your reader, of course. So your target audience for your business is someone who is also likely going to read your book. And in creating that book and in inviting them to read that book, you are bridging to them in a very powerful way. You're, you're entering their home with that book and you're being part of their daily life as they read that book. So you are building a very powerful bridge to your target audience with the book. But you're also building a bridge internally to more of who you are and who you have it in you to be. I, yeah, I see writing a book as a transformational experience. It's not just reciting what you know and slapping it down on paper. Because it can be such an intimidating process and such a vulnerable process, it requires a lot of courage 
And it requires you to really think about what you want people to know about what you've learned about your particular topic. And so you are digging deep down into yourself to build a bridge to more of who you are and who you have it in you to be. The third bridge is the bridge to your future. And I really didn't get this, the first book that I was writing, how much it was going to impact my life and my sense of, of who I think I am. And so now I see, especially that first book, but the, the, you know, the books that come after that, that's a bridge to the future you, that you have no idea who that is and what's involved in their life. And so you are creating a beautiful bridge that will unfold opportunities for you cannot even imagine yet. And that's maybe why it's a little scary for people too, because they think, oh, how's my life going to change? And um, most of the changes that I see happening for people are quite gentle and they're incremental. But if you look back from two years after you have written your book to where you were a year before you wrote your book, you'll see a massive amount of growth and development in your business and in yourself too. So it's really a beautiful process. That's awesome. That's great. Um, I, I must make, I mean, just doing it, just even like when you speak for the first time or it's just, you know, it just really gives you so much um, confidence. You know, I know when I, every, every stage of, of, of being in my business and different things like that, it's definitely helped. So how do you make your book a bestseller? So that's a big question that everybody wants to know. Cause that's, you know, they obviously everybody wants a bestseller book, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have a lot to say about bestsellers. Actually, there are different aspects to a bestseller. And when we think of a bestseller, traditionally, we think of the New York Times bestseller list, for example, right. or the Wall Street Journal bestseller list. Right. Those bestseller lists tend to be a little more reliable when it comes to the quality of the book than an Amazon bestseller, because it's much more difficult to become a New York Times bestseller than it is to become an Amazon bestseller. It, the system can still be, I, I, I don't want to say gamed, but that's really the word that comes to mind. You can game the system, but it takes a lot of dollars in order to uh, purchase the, a position as the New York Times bestseller. It's, um, and probably the New York Times bestseller people don't want me to say that because it sounds awful. But there are people out there that um, the last I heard was a quarter of a million dollars will uh, purchase the attempt at becoming a New York Times bestseller. Uh, they won't promise that they can do it for you, but there are companies out there that are managing these campaigns that will have a, a possibility of becoming a New York Times bestseller. Uh, uh, most people have to do it the old fashioned way, which is sell a mega amount of books, lots and lots of books across the country. So it's for a New York Times bestseller, it's not just in New York City that you have to be selling well, but all across the country, in bookstores, online, and all the rest of it. What has come to be much more reasonable for small business owners is to become an Amazon bestseller. And there are companies out there where you can engage their services and they will manage a bestseller campaign for you. The, that's also about selling a lot of copies in a certain amount of period. To become an Amazon bestseller, you really only need to be the selling the most number of books in your category for an hour in a day. And so how people are managing that is they're leveraging their network to encourage everybody to buy their book at a certain time on a certain day. Yeah, I, it's I've a little more complicated. Those, I've gotten those emails where they're like, yeah. come in right now and buy my book. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and the thing yeah. is, just I, and I'm an Amazon bestseller. I've I've run Amazon campaigns twice for two my last two books. And yes, reached I got number one in the category of leadership, which was really really exciting. That's and it's fun and it's exciting, but it doesn't mean it's the world's best book. And I think that's the thing we have to keep in mind. As an old fashioned writer who believes in craft and believes that a well crafted book is a is something that people work hard to develop when somebody who's just created a book and maybe didn't get it edited and does an Amazon bestseller campaign, and, oh, look, I'm a bestseller. Well, you're a bestseller, but it's not necessarily indicative of quality. And I think that's the thing we need to keep an eye on as, as people writing books is, yes, it's nice to be a bestseller. We also want that book to be as solid and well-constructed as it can be so we right. reach our audience 
and it reflects well on us. And it's a, a reputational piece that it embellishes what we're doing in the world, not detracts from it because um, what the Amazon bestseller label is now becoming diminished because there are so many people that have just slapped a book together, run an Amazon best camp bestseller campaign. Now they're what you do a bestseller. And so it's, diluting the meaning of that term now. Yeah, which is which a isn't what we want. Which I think is why a lot of people aren't aren't thrilled, especially professional writers, the ones that are, you know, work really hard and they're not thrilled with the best selling Amazon situation. But because I yeah. have I, I I have seen a few books that were not edited and it was and then they got on the bestseller Amazon because they marketed it and they but it was really scary. <laughs> I was like I would be embarrassed if I put that book out there, but you know, some people yeah. don't care. They just put it out and that's it. So yeah, okay. check, check a box, write a book, check a box. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. So we have a couple questions and I want to um, bring them out. So um, Veronica from Michigan asks, I finished writing my book manuscript. Now, what do I do? Oh, congratulations. First of all, Veronica, that is a wonderful accomplishment. Yeah. Okay. So much effort to get there and you did it just even that part is a real accomplishment I know right wonderful yep so you want to get it editor edited and if you don't know any editors then I can recommend the editorial freelancers association which is a an American association of editors and they have a wonderful database of editors available and you can do a search depending on what your topic is you can look for an editor who's a specialist in that area. And purchasing editing services, by the way, is something you want to be quite careful about. You're, you're going to be working with that editor for a while. And there's an important relationship that happens there. You want to make sure your editor gets you and understands what it is you're trying to accomplish with that book. Ideally, they're also an expert in the area that you're writing about. So for example, if you've written a personal development book, uh, you don't want to have a technical aircraft specialist editing that book. That's right. not going to be a good fit. Right. So right. I would get, get on the EFA website, do a search for editors in your topic area and shortlist maybe three or four. Get in touch with them and ask for a conversation. An editor will be happy to talk to you. If the professional ones, are they really want to be a little careful about who they're working with too to make sure that the alignment is there, that they're not... Uh, just editing for the sake of the dollars. They want to make sure that they're well suited to the projects they're taking on. Have that conversation and just see, see how well, you know, fi find the right match for you. Don't, you don't have to take the first editor that comes along. Um, editing services, you'll find different editors charge in different ways. I happen to be an hourly, you know, I charge by the hour. I'll do an estimate of what I think the project is going to cost. And then that's the estimate for the job. Some people will charge by the word, and they'll, that's another way of doing it. So find out how they charge, figure out what the budget's going to be. Yeah. And most of all, are you know, are they aligned with your vibe? Yeah. That, that I would say is most important. Thing. A really good editor, by the way, can also guide you in the publishing end of things too. So oh, that's I cool. have, uh, yeah, like I, I have so many contacts in the publishing world right now. As you know, I'm a, I'm a senior editor, and I charge more than someone who hasn't been doing it for as long. But the benefit of that is that I know lots of people in publishing and I, I, I have a good network that I can introduce people to when it comes to the publishing and they can figure out where they want to go on the publishing side. Of right. And also different freeze. That's the same with me. I've been in the business forever. It's an advantage to have a planner, to have a producer, an event producer, a wedding producer that's been in the industry a long time. We have lots of connections. And we can get you somebody who's going to match your budget because and who's going to match your style and w wedding photographers are different than you know event photographers so there always is an advantage to have someone who's been in, doing it for a long time that can guide you to the right people so i get that yeah yeah, okay, yeah so and the nuances oh. yeah yeah exactly all right so deborah from new york asks uh, there seem to be a lot of different options for publishing what questions can i ask of a self-publishing company to make sure I'm getting the best service? Right, so that's a really important question. Good good question to ask. And yep. so the first of all, you want to ask for pricing. There, there are hundreds of self-publishing companies out there and some of them are not very reputable, I am very sorry to say. 
I had one client come to me and he was so excited because this publishing company had said, yes, we have reviewed your manuscript and we are willing to take you on as a client. And, and he was thinking this must be a traditional publishing company. Uh, the cost was going, yeah, $25,000 please is what they were saying for, for this traditional company to publish him. And so he came to me all excited and I had to bust his bubble to say, first of all, a traditional publishing company will not ask you for money. They are doing this because they're going to make money or they believe they will make money on your work. So that's number one. Are you a traditional publishing company or are you a self-publishing company? And please be honest, but if they are asking you for money, they are not a traditional publishing company. Um, they were asking 20, they, they said $25,000. Well, what is, whatever the, the cost is, whether it's 5,000 or $25,000, what does that include? And you'll find that some packages have a lot of bells and whistles in them, but they're, they're not aligned with what you need. So I think they were charging three or $4,000 to write a press release for him. Now, I've, I'm a professional writer. I know the, the value of a well-written press release, but I kind of suspected this wasn't gonna do the job for him because yeah. I, I know people in publicity and so on. Um, and, and by the way, he didn't even need the press release. He, had, he, was a, uh, he runs Africa's largest online newspaper. The guy has access to fabulous writers. And anyway, long story short, what, what are they going to do for the money? Do you need what they're offering to do for you? And it's very difficult. And I think this is why, why there are some disreputable companies out there at this point, because most people only buy publishing services once or maybe twice in their lives. I've bought hundreds of pairs of shoes in my life. I know how to buy a pair of shoes. <laughs> I I know what the qualities are. No one's going to put anything like that. Yeah, but I know what I'm looking for, right? When it comes to publishing, we don't know what we're looking for that first time, especially. And so you want to make sure that you understand what they're offering in the package. And run it by someone else. Run it by your editor. What do you think of this? Is it right. stack up to you? And uh, compare apples to apples, that's the other thing. Different publishing companies will have different packages that will include different things. So you wanna go line by line in the offers that they're making you and, and see what the different costs of that are. Yeah. But there awesome. are some that's outstanding great. publishers out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, great. Okay, so my last question, if everybody has a question, we're, we're coming down to the hour here, so be sure to get them in. But um, Steve from California asks, my friends have been telling me for years that I'm a pretty good writer. Do I really need an editor? We kind of covered this, but you know. Yeah. Yes, everybody needs an editor. <laughs> it's, again, because an editor will pick up things that you missed. So when I'm working on a manuscript, for example, and I, I work with everybody from people who are dyslexic quite often and they wanted to write a book to people who are highly competent writers. And the, the typical mistakes that I catch in a manuscript, and I hate to call them mistakes, they're oversights more than anything. So um, there are, you make, you'll make a logical leap because you understand your topic so well, you know in your head what you're saying, but you're not necessarily explaining that to your readers. So you right. kind of jump over information. And that's, that's something an editor will catch for you. Uh, the, aside from the grammar and the punctuation and all the rest of that, your editor will catch, uh, you know, we're, we tend to be perfectionist editors. Yeah. We, we love finding yeah. mistakes. Like it's, that makes it's, me crazy. It's the whole punctuation thing. I'm, I, I'm a freak about that. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're, yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, it's the grammar. It's um, the, the punctuation. It's, you know, the, how, um, Log logic is a big part of what I catch is sometimes people will have a sentence and the way it's written, I think they mean one thing, but I'm not sure. And so if there's any lack of clarity, your editor will catch that too. And, right. and really it's, it's not about judgment. And that's the thing that I invite people to remember. I'm as, you know, I started in journalist and there were three layers of editors above me as a junior reporter at a daily newspaper. It's not about whether I was a good writer or a bad writer. It was about the reputation of the news organization. Those editors are there to protect their reputation. And the same thing in marketing, the same thing in, in corporate communications and government communications. There's always an editor involved to save you from yourself. 
Right. And it's not it's not that you're a good writer or a bad writer. It's that we want to create the most impressive and solid piece of writing we possibly can. And that takes the team. We're, we're stronger together. And yeah. so your editor is a really important part of your team. Yeah. Even when we do, video, you can rely on. we do video and it's uh, editing's everything. You know, it makes us look so much better yeah. with editing. So. Well, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. I learned a ton. I'm kind of excited. I'm in the middle of launching a big program for my event planner and wedding planner, uh, you know, group of people. And um, but after I do that, it's probably going to be on my list because you know I've always wanted to. I teach one on one. I coach one on one. But I wanted to do bring it to many as opposed to one on one. So right now, it's a lot of work putting a program together, as you know. So I, uh, that's kind of my, my thing this year and into next year, but I am definitely going to, and I will be reaching out to you because I cannot do this by mm -hmm. myself. I'm mm -hmm. definitely going to reach out because I want to make sure that I'm doing it right. And, and speaking of how can people reach you? Oh, well, I am more than happy if someone wants to email me and just say, Hey, can we talk? And my email address is Susan S U S A N at crossman communications.com and I'm around happy to do that I do have a free gift if anybody's interested sure. in how to write more. yeah well yeah I've put together a three module writing course for people and it's how to help people structure their writing better to help people write with better style because that's nice. an important issue when you're writing and also how to write for audience engagement and that's something else a lot of people are concerned about how do I reach my audience so people are more than welcome to download my free guide. It's a, well, it's a course, mini course, at crossmanscrashcourse.com. So, so no apostrophe in the Crossman. At crossmancrashcourse.com, right? Yeah, crossmans, crossmans with an S. Oh, with an S. Crossmans, oh, but no apostrophe, oh. which drives me crazy, but it's, uh, <laughs> no, yeah. So Crossman. Crossman crash crashcourse.com correct yes awesome and awesome. that'll that'll get you the it's free and i'm beating the drum for better writing everywhere because it's a skill that we all need and we can all improve we're all on a writing continuum and so there's yeah. always room for more improvement. no i mean i i feel like i write all the time that's all i do i mean i do a lot of typing but to me so that's a good question one last thing should we write it out or do we type it out does that matter Ooh, there are different opinions on that. Some people say that writing it longhand is actually better because you are stimulating the opposite side of your brain. So I'm left-handed, so when I write, I'm stimulating the right hemisphere of my brain, which is the creative side. And uh, right-handed people will be stimulating the logical side. Um, that may be reversed, I'm not sure of my neurology on that, but yeah. some people do say that it is better. I find it is really slow. It's the slow boat to China for me to write anything longhand yeah. anymore, just because I do it all the time. And I don't feel that interferes with my creativity. I, I type just because it gets the job done faster. And I'm, my brain is connected to my keyboard at this point in my life. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. That's awesome. Well, thank you, my dear. Thank you so much. I'm so excited uh, we did this. Thank you for joining us. And you guys you. reach out if you need Susan to help you out with your book. And that's it. We're done. That's it for the next. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank you, so Thank you much. so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. I'm actually going to be live on Wednesday next week. And uh, because we have a really special guest that couldn't make it on Thursday, but we're going to do it on third on Wednesday. So we'll be sending out the, uh, the marketing on that. So we'll see you guys later. Have a fantastic awesome. day. So All right. Much. Take care. Bye.